All right. So one of the things we figured out last time uh, is um, that we needed some kind of representation of, of a player. Um, and so one thing that, that will be interesting is uh, how much of this do we get to reuse with our Blackjack game and how that's going to work. So that might be interesting. But one of the things we figured out was, um, and clearly I was hungry when I wrote this, uh, is that we figured out some of our terminology, right? So a game has players, um, and the player uh, has basically holding on to sort of their, their current play, uh, which is in sort of the single player version of this, uh, it, are the categories, um, which ones have been scored, what the total score is, things like that. Um, what we're, what gets confusing is like, so does the player store that stuff internally? Or does it have a reference to something else? And what would that something else be called? We sort of ran into a similar problem with, with a blackjack. Is there a round? But I guess we'll see. I don't know. Instead of trying to figure it out, we'll we'll see actually what, what occurs. Right? As as James Shore said, we'll 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 listen to the code and see what it tells us. Okay. Um so what we want to do is we want to create a representation of a player that stores their part of the game. Uh so we figured this out because we looked at our game flow and we want to basically um enter the game area, so basically start the game as a player. Um, so what we want to ask for is uh, uh, get player name, so name, um, and then clear their scoreboard. Maybe is what we we call it. Um, and so then we start start the game. Although I think we actually create the game first, and then a player joins. Although I don't even know if we need a game object just yet. Uh, because we said game has players, so I don't think we mean game here. I think it creates a, a scoreboard. Or we start the game. I don't think we need this. We just start Yacht. We'll start, start the Yacht game. Um, choose category for scoring. Thank you. Repeat until no categories are left unassigned, and then we show the final score. Um, uh, and this is more update score, and then repeat from one. So uh, one. Oh, this is also one. Is that format right? Uh, I hate the way it uses those numerals. Okay, whatever. Okay, so um, so I like the idea of scoreboard. So a game has players, um, each of whom have a scoreboard that contains roles and score and categories. Um, in the scoreboard. So the scoreboard can tell us when they're basically done. Uh, so I think, do we even need to worry about the player concept just yet? Maybe not, maybe we can just start with the scoreboard. So what would we require of the scoreboard? Um, uh, so let's think about the, the game flow again. So, Maybe let's create a, a sequence diagram. How about that? Uh, so this would be game flow plant UML. So start UML, end UML, and um, I always forget the syntax for the sequence diagrams.
Uh, I thought I had one here. Maybe not. Uh, so plant UML. That's state diagram. We want sequence diagram. Sequence, sequence, sequence. There it is. Uh, right. Okay. So we've got player. Um, um, how do we want to format this? What do we want to do here? So this is really an actor. And so then player, uh, I'm going to actually call him, call this user and then user basically clicks on clicks on a new game button um, and so then the browser will talk to uh, a controller And basically as a post. Uh, so they click on a button. And so what we want to do is basically show the scoreboard. I think that's what we want. So um, so controller browser and I know we're skipping sort of the server but that's fine uh, and it returns a uh, scoreboard view um, and so now there's an option of uh, uh, click roll dice And so the browser tells the controller uh, post of roll dice. Oh, thank you for the caffeinate, the cookie manager, anger, manager. <laughs> uh, I think I'm out of coffee, which means my stream is probably almost over. Uh, and this is post uh, new game or New game, something like that. Roll dice. Why am I not spelling dice correctly? Um, and so then uh, controller talks to um, basically it talks to our yacht, which is currently our 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 class that. Uh, and it's going to say uh, roll dice. So interesting that yacht is probably the scoreboard. Um, so something like that. Uh, and then Yacht will do something to the scoreboard. Uh, add dice roll. Or update dice roll. I don't know. I'm not crazy about the name there. Uh, and so when we come back to the scoreboard, sends back. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think the yacht will talk back to the controller and return um, uh, 
Actually, I don't think it'll return anything. I think. Uh, I think the controller basically returns back. So the scoreboard view is going to have sort of, I guess the scoreboard view, the scoreboard is sort of has, has the state. It's got to be state somewhere. Right? We ran into this with the blackjack game. It's going to be state somewhere. Uh, where that state's going to be. Right, so uh, we roll the dice, choose a category for scoring, um, update score, and this cycle, this game loop, uh, somebody's got to be aware of that. So the controller will send back to the browser um, the scoreboard view, and the um, in a sense the browser, although this isn't quite right, uh, but the browser, maybe this is a note. Where is notes? That's grouping, here we go. Uh, note, note right, note right. Oh. Yeah. Why is that not correct? Oh, because I forgot the colon. There we go. Uh, so we want note left. Yeah, I think our yacht is kind of the game. I'm not sure because there's there yacht is doing some stuff. Um around uh, valuing, it's basically the scorer. Um, it currently has rolled dice, although we're not using it. And so, uh, I'm, I'm not sh I think, this, yeah. It's gonna be something, of, it, it will not be called Yacht anymore. And I'm not quite sure what its role is yet. Um, because right now it's really this, its main job right now is, is scoring. Uh, and I think something else will leverage the, the scoring capabilities of this. So this is just going to be the scorer. In fact, if we wanted to, we could rename it. Um, but it's, it's a bit unclear what, what this thing is. Um, it really is the game. I hesitate to say controller. Or manager um, but it kind of is the is the game and there is just one of them right now uh, so um, And so then uh, the user tells the browser, whoops. So the user tells the browser, uh, click on some category. Um, and then uh, the browser basically sends that to the controller as some post of uh, category X. So when we get to here, right, there'll be basically a form, um, some kind of form where each category is a button. Um, Initially, we'll allow them to select whatever. Uh, we'll have to figure out, we'll probably have to figure out the view first, um, how we want to display that. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to figure out. Um, I think next time I do a TDD example, I'm going to pick something even simpler. Because <laughs> there's a lot going on here. Like just figuring out like what is, what is, 
what is the sequence of things of who's talking to what um we're kind of making some assumptions here that once uh you know there's the old saying you know planning is great but you know no plan survives first contact with the enemy or whatever you want however you want to phrase it um this is sort of our plan but really we're just trying to figure out what is the 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 flow of in, inside the system um but once we start writing tests we'll be listening to the code and once we start creating classes again we'll be listening to the code and seeing what fits where we'll be looking for opportunities to, to refactor so um we do this uh and so then um the game tells the score the controller tells the game and this might just be one thing it might just be game controller and talks directly to the scoreboard uh assign dice roll to category feels like they're they're one and the same uh so maybe this is just game controller Whoa, what happened to my... Well, that didn't work out very well. Let's just call this game controller um, instead of arbitrarily separating these two roles. Uh, and then we can... Uh, so game controller... Yeah, something like that. Um, how do I do multiple lines? Ah, backslash M. There we go. Okay, I think that this gives us a sense for uh, for sort of the, sort of the flow that, that we want, um, basically through the point where we have si assigned uh, a dice roll to to a category. I think that'll that'll guess get us far enough. Uh, so Afi asks, are you saying that we should be careful when applying TDD to some complex objects? No, I mean I th I think the difficulty here or the what we're dealing with right now is more about functionality what do we want the thing to do um and i'm not too worried about getting the sort of responsibilities assigned to the appropriate class it's really more you know this is a very high level sort of thinking thinking view um what i am saying is that i mean you should you should basically all I don't know if you caught if you were watching James Sure stuff, but he talks about you know code whispering and listening to your code, and I talk about that a lot as well. And what you want to do is you want to be always aware and always noticing um, basically code smells, right? So the, at a very high level, um, you know when we're doing TDD, we're writing a bunch of code, and so I think what's interesting is is and let me let me talk about this for a second. Um, not only is this the minimal amount of code to pass right and that is much less than you than you think you need but it's actually also possibly the the dumbest code and i don't and i mean that as sort of very um like the most straightforward forward thing that could possibly work because the refactoring stage is when we do the cleanup and so here we're, we're writing code that might might be messy. So um, so really we want to write the most straightforward code as possible, right? And so we're 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 in this mode of i just want to get the test to pass and i don't care how i do it right and 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 that's a very different approach than um what you might typically take which is 
you're gonna write code carefully and you're gonna sort of maybe even refactor along the way. And I think that's a mistake because you don't quite yet know what things should look like. And so what's nice about this process um, is, right, we, we basically write our failing test and it's not just the minimum amount of code, but it might be messy code. Um, once we figured out how to, how to, how to solve it, um, and it may be like an obvious implementation might actually just be a copy and paste with some modifications. Once we get to refactoring, here's where we spend our time to clean up the code. And so I am much less worried about the quality of the code that I write at, at this stage, right? At the minimum amount of code to pass stage, um, than I am uh, later on, right? So I'll, and you've seen me do this, right? You've seen me write sort of really ugly, messy, uh, highly indented, um, right? Kind of all the stuff that you would think, oh, that's really bad code. Uh, so I'm fine with writing bad code here as long as it gets me to green. That's my goal, right? So it might be messy or, ba or you know, bad code. But as long as it gets me to green, that's all that matters. Because once I get to green and everything is in green and I've handled all the, the I've minimally handled all the situation, then I can go and refactor and take a, a higher level look and say, okay, what do I need to clean up? Um, but now I'm sure that we're in, in a stage where stuff is working. Whereas when you sort of refactor along the way or you try to write perfect code, um, I feel like I, I know I get sort of hung up on it and, uh, when I should be focused on just getting to green. So I hope that was, I hope that at least addressed what you were thinking, um, or at least clarified what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see how far we can get in, in the next 40 minutes. And maybe we'll go a little bit overboard. Let's see. Um, so the main thing that, that I, so, we could write a test from the outside where we basically uh, expect, um, oh good, uh, where we sort of expect sort of views, but I think we have a good sense of that, right? I think we have a sense of what the UI looks like. And so I don't feel the need to write sort of tests at the browser level. I think we can dive into sort of this at, at the game controller or, or whatever we call game um, level. Um, and so each one of these, right, from sort of from left to right is is somewhat matching a layer uh, in, in our system. Now, I'm not using layer here as sort of an architectural layer, like, you know, we talk about, you know, multi-layer systems or things like that. I'm really talking about the, it's more the boundaries of what we're looking at. Um, so what we can see from the browser sort of to game, right, we're getting things like events happening. We're getting requests coming in. And we need to translate those requests to something in the game. But we know what those requests are. So I think we can, um, maybe this is game service and then we get a game. That might be something we can, we can start with. Uh, yeah, let's, let's start with that. Wish I had another screen that I could here, put that on. Uh, so let's go to. So we sort of had player, um, but we, I think we can actually delete those because I don't think because I think we've we may end up with player, um, but I don't think it, I'm not sure it'll be this. So let's let's delete these. Um, we'll probably delete player first. That's fine. And then we'll go and delete player test. I guess we should have deleted the test first, but who cares? Uh, so let's go commit this is um, uh, updated our understanding of the of the game flow with a sequence diagram. Oops. Okay. So what's interesting is if we look at, at, at the name of this test class, 
this probably indicates a little bit about what Yacht is doing, that it's scoring, right? Because we've got scoring right here in the name of our test. And same thing for here, right? We've got scoring in the, in, in the name of our test. So this is clearly, this Yacht class is clearly right now all about scoring. So maybe we should rename that. Um, and then we can pull the dice roller stuff out because we're not currently using it. Um, So I think we actually want to split this class, uh, which is kind of funny because this is this is no longer. Even though you know I I don't tend to teach a lot about the single responsibility principle, I think it that very much because it's usually not very helpful. But I think in this we can say, look, we've got stuff that deals with um, the rolling of the dice, uh, and then we have something that deals with uh, scoring it. So let's move this out. Um, and I think the best way to refactor this is uh, so we're not in JavaScript, so we we have we have an advantage, but can we use this to our advantage? Um, I could copy the class and then change all the references. Because uh, I think the only thing that's invoking roll dice is just the die roll test. Um, I'm almost tempted to just delete it because we weren't happy about this anyway. And if we look at the, the test, um, I honestly think we should delete this. Let's do it. Let's delete the test, right? Because there's nothing in here that's really that we can't recreate. Um, we've got our random die roller, so when we finally use one, uh, when we finally need a roller, we've got one. Um, but I think we can delete this this test. Uh, I do like our, our having our rules here. So I'll hold on to that. Let's delete this test, right? And now we can go and delete. Uh, the die rolling stuff from here. Uh, we might have broken something. Somebody didn't remind me to run all our tests before we started doing this, so let's go run all our tests. So all our tests passed, so that's good. So we basically deleted a test because we didn't like its interface anyway, that it was storing as a string. Um, we weren't really using it, um, and so it's gone. Uh, so now we can basically rename this to be Yacht Score. Um, and uh, I don't think I want to rename any of those. So let's go here. Um, If we rename it to Yacht Score, then I wonder, uh, I would be tempted to rename the method and drop the word score. Because it's a score, what else is it doing? Um, so let's change the variable name. I'm gonna leave the methods because I'm unsure whether they're gonna stay anyway. Um, but let's go ahead and, and rename all those local variables. Okay, and so what should we do next? All the tests. Even though these were automated refactorings, we got tests, let's use them. Okay, so we're all good. Uh, so let's commit. Um... F2. Ah, okay. So we basically uh, removed um, dice rolling capability from Yacht, uh, renamed Yacht to Yacht for 
All right. So now um, we can uh, go back here and take a look. So what do we want? We want to start a bit on the inside of um, so something create some kind of factory creates a new. game or scoreboard and this is where i get always I, i've ever since i've started working on some of these games i get hung up between sort of game and 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 scoreboard and so uh what are the responsibilities of game um is it really I wonder if um, let's let's can we forget about game and just focus on scoreboard and then see if if something else pops out that sort of represents game because I think the the thing that that I that I'm most clear about um, is a scoreboard. So the question is is who's responsible for rolling the dice? That's not the scoreboard, All right? The scoreboards and so here's where somebody should be saying. Hey, Ted, break out your CRC cards. Uh, so let's break out the CRC cards. Let's see if that camera view works. Yes. A little dark. Seem to have been pushed behind something. Hold on. Oh, now I'm in front of the chat. Let's move that back. <laughs> uh, this should be in front of that. Nope. Wrong way. Uh, blue should be behind. No. Oh, I think I just got to adjust my window there. Hold on. That shouldn't be that big. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't know how that got changed. Okay. Um, so let's look at, uh, put these away. I'm working on my, my TDD game. And see, I'll put those away. So what we want is up our marker. So uh, so we've got scoreboard. Um, and so what is it responsible for? Why is this tilted? So scoreboard is responsible for, um, Tracking used categories and apologies for my handwriting. Um, I need to work on that. Uh, so tracking used categories. What else? Uh, for um, knowing knowing about the total score. So calculate total. Um, what else is it responsible for? Um, that might be it. And so what it's going to collaborate with, I don't think it collaborates with anything at this point. I think it has all the knowledge it needs uh, and it therefore is responsible 
it's sort of the edge of, of, a, of an object graph. Um, so, so then what talks to scoreboard, I guess is the question. Um, Whatever, whatever that thing is, is uh, is it the player or is it um, hmm. I don't think it's the game. I mean, it might be the game. So what is the game? If the, if so, then what does the game have? What is the game? What are the game's responsibilities? Uh, so maybe roll dice. And it can um, not sure. Well, I guess uh, it can it can assign. Well, so track to use categories. Uh, so the scoreboard will have an assign role to category. Uh, oh well, so the scoreboard is certainly gonna. I forgot about that. Uh, it's certainly gonna collaborate with the yacht scorer. Um, and so the game is going to collaborate with the scoreboard. Um, I mean, maybe that's it, right? Maybe it's just roll dice. Uh, it knows when the game is over. Um, what else does it know? Uh, so off he says we should have something that says that the user lost or not based on the score. Yeah, so evaluating um, They never lose. I mean unless they're playing against somebody else if you're playing sort of the solitaire version of it It's basically you could say well, what is your score out of the most perfect possible score? Maybe um, But otherwise it's just a score, but at least it should know when the game is over so that it can so that you're basically done um, That might be it so, so if we think about uh, a command comes in that says roll the dice, um, and I guess who's responsible for knowing what the last roll is, that would probably also be the game. 
because the scoreboard shouldn't know about it until we actually assign that role. Sorry, assign the assign the role to a category. So it's not only tracking use categories, but uh, uh, can handle assigning role to category. And so then this is uh, uh, knows last roll, which is sort of inherent in the roll dice. And maybe it knows all rolls, but for now, last roll is probably fine. I think that's good enough to get started. Um, Oh, there's a view I forgot to create when I moved, when I transitioned from my Mac to my PC streamer, I had a split view for um, uh, the, the drawing and uh, the code, and that would be a handy view to have around now, but oh well, I don't have that, we'll deal with it. Let's go back to the code and my... Overlay seems to have crashed. Oh, I didn't turn, <laughs> I didn't specify what we were doing. Um, and nobody told me. Uh, so we're not quite doing that. We're actually um, PDDing, uh, playing of the uh, yacht dice game. Okay. So we're done. I think we're done with, with our CRC section and now we can go um, now I think we can implement some stuff. Yes, let's listen to the code to see are, are we on the right track. So uh, following rule number one, which is never write code without a failing test, um, I think we want to start with Let's start with game because that that feels closer to to the front end than than the scoreboard does. Um, we're currently looking at that, so that's here. Uh, so let's go create a test, and that will be our domain test. Why is it not letting me create? weird um so let's create uh this is going to be just game test oops my keyboard shortcuts are flipped and um Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is um, I guess ask the game to roll the dice and then we can request its its last roll. So uh, uh, roll dice returns roll roll dice then uh query last roll returns that roll something like that so uh so let's go and instantiate a game we'll create a class we'll new it up or a variable and we want to ask the game to roll the dice. Create that method. Um, and then we can ask the game. Uh, last roll. 
Uh, what's it going to return? List of integer. So that's the current way we're talking about that. Uh, I'm fine with returning null for that. Um, because really what we want to say is not null. Uh, let's organize our tests, or at least let's tag our tests so that we're not running the um, the controller ones. So let's tag this uh, integration, or actually just spring, and spring. And why is this controller here? This is in the wrong place. This is one of those where it got put into the wrong. It shouldn't be here. It should be in uh, source main Java. Oh, IntelliJ. Okay. I was wondering, it's like, where did, where did that come from? Okay. Uh, so we've got two tests. Um, so let's create a runtime configuration that is like all tests, uh, but is just uh, is basically non-spring. So all unit tests, uh, and this is basically tags, and we want not spring. And I think that's the right way to do it. Let's try it. Yes, that did what we wanted. Okay, good. Uh, and then we can go and edit the other one to basically say all tests, and that just runs all our tests. Okay, good. So we've got this test failing. And um, we can pretty quickly fix this by making it do nothing uh then we'll hit the the null here and then we'll have to figure out what to return so we could just return a list of and then uh uh one two three four five and that will get the test to pass and it does um so So we now have an ability to roll a dice and get the last roll. Um, so what we'd like to then find out is what are, uh, we'd like to, the user is gonna see the roll. Um, they're gonna want to assign it to a category. Now there's a, uh, a, a an actual play option that we haven't talked about that we're not gonna implement today, certainly. Um, and that's about you can sort of pick some um, some of the dice to re-roll, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, so what we want next is uh, given a roll, uh, assign assign it to a category. So. Um, Sign roll to score scoring category. Now this is this is not specific enough, and so we're gonna have to come up with some example, um, which means we're we're gonna have to get the score. Uh, so one thing that we would like before we can sort of implement this is we should be able to just get the current score. Now the question is, do we get that from the game? Or do we get that from the scoreboard? That's the question. Um, I feel like let's ask the game and then we'll see uh, maybe scoreboard pops out. Um,
So what we want is we want to roll the dice, assign it to a category, and then say, what's our current score? Uh, so we could start out with, you know, uh, new game results in score of zero. And so again, we're doing this because we want to figure we want to figure out like okay what's the baseline the game starts the score is zero but at least we sort of know the api for for asking for the game right and we don't know what the game's going to do the game may end up asking the scoreboard we may put the code in game and then ref and then factor it out into scoreboard um we don't know that's likely the way we go but we may discover uh something is better so we'll ask the game uh Pretty much simply just ask the game uh, score and this is going to be an int uh, and we'll throw an exception uh, is zero so this will fail and it does pretty easy to make it pass And it passes so now we can go think about um so basically we've established a baseline that a new game it scores zero so now let's move this up boy that really wrecked this thing so now we want to be able to uh assign a role and i'm using the word wrong role there <laughs> <laughs> uh, assign dice roll to scoring category now um, so we'll create a game and what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask the game so assign roll to and then some kind of category but let's 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 start out with let's assign this role um, to the ones category to the number ones category. This is clearly not going to scale, especially once we need to sort of um, be able to call this depending on what the user chose. But this is this is basically getting us forward to like. Can we ask it to score it and then get the, the appropriate score? So we'll do that. And notice that we're not passing in the role, right? We shouldn't have to because the game already knows what the last role was. And so it should take the last role and just assign it. There's no reason to be passing that role around. Uh, and now we can assert that the game.score, well, what can we assert? How do we know what the role is? Um, so how do we basically inject a role uh, in, into the game? So assign um, one, one, two, three, four dice roll to one scoring category results in two, in score of two. So we can say that this is uh, equal to two. Now clearly this will fail. And so we can't hard code this to be returning two. And so um, what we can do is uh, and last roll actually returns something. Um, are we using this? Yeah, we were just checking if it was not null. That wasn't terribly useful. Um, what we can do is we can... Uh, we probably should, should also roll the dice. So game, roll dice. And then we have a little bit more control here. So now roll dice. Uh, we can store something about. Um, 
So last roll equals some list of, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so we'll need, we'll create this as a field. And already, if we haven't, hadn't noticed all, hadn't noticed before with our yacht score, um, this list of integer is, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. I can hear it saying, this needs to be a, an encapsulated class. So, uh, so I'm, I'm hearing that. And once we get this test to pass, I think we'll do that refactor. Uh, so we'll roll the dice. We're going to hard code this, um, which isn't particularly great because it's separated from, uh, we don't see this hard codedness in the test, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, and now assign the role to the number ones category. Um, we'll do nothing there and we'll basically, uh, sc score this. Um, we'll do, uh, new yacht score, uh, score is ones and then basically last roll. So we've hard coded a bunch of stuff, and so we'll continue to write more tests to, to basically start seeing where where what things are go where. Um, it's a little bit magical that this uh, we may have to to inject a, a die roller, but I think the tests will pass. No, the zero one doesn't work because we have we've got a null pointer exception. So that's good. Right, so we realize that we've got something not quite right. Um, so let's go here. Uh, basically, if no dice have been rolled, um, we should protect against that. So maybe we have just some... Uh, first of all, let's pull this out into a field. No, field. And initialize uh, field declaration. That's what I want. I don't know what you think you were doing there. Um, and uh, so last roll, can we just do an empty list? What will happen? I don't remember how we're using it. Yeah, I guess that's okay. That's fine. So clearly that's not great, but we've got passing tests. So that means it's time to commit. Uh, so we've got the um, game class now handles rolling dice. Not really. Uh, and scoring only assigns to one's uh, one's category. I'll commit that. Um, probably should have done a separate commit for the tagging. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, I think just the tag. Oh, that got moved. Uh, so actually, let's not check those in just yet. Um, moved controller to uh, source main as where it should have been. Uh, tagged spring tests, so we don't run them with the rest of the unit tests. So let's commit that. Uh, and now we'll do that and commit that. Okay, good. Um, let's extend the stream a bit because we're on a roll, no pun intended. Okay, pun intended. Um,
Will this accept 0.5? Or is it just assume it's a round number? Because otherwise I'll have to add uh, add hours and then add minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so import add. I'm assuming it's add minutes from. See, this is this is basically another feature I need. Uh, basically, like extend stream for like thirty minutes. So date functions add uh, minutes. And then we'll basically do add minutes, comma, 30. There we go. OK. Uh, but I want to put that in the Trello board because I want to remember that. Um, uh, delay stream end by 30 minutes. Uh, quick button option to. Okay. I really, I kind of like the date functions library. It's pretty handy. I like the way that it, it, it's immutable too. All right. Um, let's go back to our game test. So, uh, so we've got this assign scores of that. So we want to start triangulating. Um, oh, we were going to refactor. I think we, we, we know we want to refactor um, that list of integers to, to basically a dice roll. Uh, and then I think that will, will maybe be the end of, uh, of the stream. We'll see where, where we end up. Uh, so let's go to our, uh, our full house test. And... Um, Actually, let's go to our number categories test. Uh, and let's write a test that um, So we currently don't have a test against the score as fours. Uh, so let's sort of write against that one. Um, but what we want is a, a dice roll of 555, 5544 scores, 12 for fours category. And so we'll create a yacht score. No. And but what we'll do instead is we want score to uh, score as fours. Um, but instead, what we'd like to pass in is we'd like to have some class where we can say five, five, four, 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 four. Right. So kind of using the similar interface uh, that list gives us. This convenience method of of, and I think that's nice, nice for us to have. Um, and then we can assert that. Uh, oh, let's not assert yet. Clean this up. We'll create the class dice roll. Let's be careful. It goes in the source main, and it does. It's in our domain, so that goes there. Um, then we'll create this of method. This is going to be a static method, uh, but it will not return a list of integer. It will return a dice roll. Um, I'm not sure what to call these variables. Die one, die two, die three, die four, die five. What's interesting is the name will tell is already kind of the code is telling us. Does this really? need to be int? Should this be int? Maybe we should be thinking about that. So might not be saying it loudly, but it's it's sort of, you know, tapping you on the shoulder saying, mm, think about that. Okay. Um, we'll return null for now, which will clearly be a problem. Uh, but now at least we can finish this test. 
So now we have score is fours. Um, what we could do is uh, create an overloaded version. Um, like this. And since we want this to be compatible with the other one, um, we can say dice roll score and then do a regular score. And we'll say the yacht score, score is fours. Um, here we'll pass a list of five, five, four, four, four. And these should be the same. Uh, so assert that dice roll score is equal to four. So these should act in the, in, in the same way, uh, which means this method, this test method name may, maybe is not uh, correct. So um, old score or fours is same as dice roll based four. And you can we can already get a sense of this is a this is a temporary transitional test. So we got this. This should fail because I don't because it's going to return negative one. And negative one is certainly not the correct score. And that's true. So that's good. Um, and so what we can do now is we can delegate. Um, we can delegate this to uh, the other method. So let's go up here. So calculate score. Uh, where is calculate score? That's weird. For some reason, uh, the moderation tools thought that what you said was profanity? I have no idea why. Anyway, um, so if I did the var args, then I would allow any number of rolls. But what we're trying to do with dice roll is be very explicit. So this is where it's unlike the list one. Um, we're very explicit. There are five. A dice roll has five die in it. Not three, not six, not one, but five. Um, and interestingly enough, you, you would, you'll you also notice that the list.of um, doesn't just use var args, right? So if we go, you actually see that because it turns out it, it's more optimal um, to have basically up to like, I think it goes up to 10. Seven, eight, nine, uh, eight, nine, ten, um, and then after that it goes to to basically var args. But it turns out to be more efficient uh, this way. Um, but even if that were not so, uh, this is actually starting to constrain our dice roll, right? That's and that's one of the the one of the reasons we're we're creating this is because list of integer could be anything, but at least a dice roll is five ints. Now we haven't constrained what those ints are, but we've we've done sort of one axis of constraint. So what we want is calculate score, um, basically takes the dice and turns it into a stream. Um, so I th think I think it would be useful. Um, have to be able uh, so now we get to what is the how should dice roll expose its information and it's possible that some of this gets pushed into um, into dice roll 
And so here's 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 an interesting uh, responsibility question of is dice roll responsible also for knowing, for example, the count of a certain die? Right. So can we ask dice roll, hey, how many twos are there? That seems useful. Um, well, we would have to figure out what to do here for uh, for calculating full house. But I think I think that makes sense. Yeah. So um, what calculates what we're going to need is, is sort of another calculate score method that that takes. Uh, and we can just put it right in here and then we'll extract it out as we need it. But remember, right now, right, we're writing bad, dumb, straightforward code. Uh, so we can ask, what would we like from dice roll? We'd like to ask it um, count for four. And then we return that times four. Right? Yeah. And so we already know how to implement this, so let's go uh, create this method. Um, now, so here's an interesting uh, Here's an interesting place that we're at. So we could force this to return something that will pass the test. But the problem is, is now we are uh, one. We got a, a sort of a middleman here who's possibly getting, getting in the way. Um, and it depends on how we implement dice roll. So now one of the rules, go back to the rules of TDD, um, how do we get to green quickly? Uh, we could fake it, right? Return a hard-coded value. Uh, we could triangulate. We're not quite doing that. Um, but I think there's an obvious implementation. Right? We already have the implementation of this. Assuming that the dice roll stores internally the dice as a list, which seems, it seems appropriate, we know exactly how to do this. Right? We know this code works, so we can pretty much copy this code, go into our dice roll, return that, uh, and then create uh, a field that is a list of integer. And then this uh, I don't know that we need to change this just yet. And so for this um, uh, this should actually be score uh it's not score category it's um mm, die value not crazy about that and we have to cast it So now, um, where are we? I think our test still fails because we got a null pointer exception. Uh, because this is not really returning anything valuable. Uh, it's returning a null here. So we need to actually go and return this. So we need to say uh, return new dice roll, like it's spell. Um, Hey, Lone Wolf. 
Uh, basically, die one, die two, die three, die four, and die five. Uh, we'll create a constructor. And um, this is basically dice equals list of die one, die two, die three, die four, die five. Um, what's it complaining about here? Field dice may be final. Oh yeah, sure, make that final. Thank you. Okay, so now if we run it, it shouldn't be null. I think that'll work, and it does. So now we we have basically uh, initially done our initial refactoring um, of. We now have a compatible version of scores fours that takes a dice roll versus a list, and so now what we can do. So let's commit this. And so we're migrating uh, started migrating a list of integer to the encapsulated value object of dice roll. Right, and so now, um, now we can go into now we've got dice roll, it's fully functional at least as far as we've needed. Now we can go into yacht score, uh, and so we're going to have to basically change this, change all of list integer to be a dice roll. Now, I don't know if it'll let us do. A type migration? Let's see what happens. I haven't, I don't use this one very often. Uh, yeah, so it has no way of knowing how to convert a list of to a dice roll. Which is too bad. Um, but let's ignore that and see what happens. So it changed all of dice roll. Um, now calculate score is going to be a problem. So maybe we, we jump the gun a bit. But that's okay. We'll have tests that, that fail. Uh, these two are incompatible. So let's actually get rid of this one. Uh, so we've got a problem here, so we knew that was going to be a problem. Because uh, what do we want out of the dice roll? This might have been too big of a step. Yeah, this was too big of a step. So let's let's take a step back. Well, actually, maybe not. Um, count we know how to do. We can ask uh the dice itself for that and then we can get rid of this and then we don't need this so that's fine so now we just have the stream uh for the full house one this is a bit more complicated so we could expose stream um, but it's not a double stream, it's an int stream. Well, technically it's a stream of t. And we can return uh, dice.stream. And the, I don't know why it didn't add the type, I guess it didn't know what I was doing here. So we'll have some refactoring to do, but my, my goal is to stay in green. So are we still in green? Okay, so we've got some places where we have to now fix up where it couldn't convert the list of. Uh, so last roll, we can just say uh, new dice roll. Um, 
Now we can't pass an empty list. Um, that's an interesting question. So what are we going to do here? We can basically just copy this into here. Uh, last roll, this becomes dice roll of. I think that's it for here. Uh, we don't need that. Um, I think there's still some place doesn't compile. Yeah, all our tests. Okay. But this should be easy because now all we have to do is, is just replace uh, list dot with dice roll dot. And now, basically same thing here. And is that it? Okay, so it now compiles. And so let's run our tests. Pretty good. We've got now just one failing test. Um, and this is the new gamers, uh, this is one where we sort of knew that, I mean, I didn't say it out loud, but when we changed uh, the new game with the last dice roll, um, we need some kind of sort of no object. There is none yet. Um, we could we could store as an optional. Uh, for now, we could just store it as a zero. And I think that'll get the test to pass. And it does. So we've migrated and I've gotten rid of any reference to list. Um, except here. Uh, but we should actually change that to return uh, a dice roll. Because our goal is to get rid of any anything that references list. Um, this can now be dice roll. And we can look at our imports, right? We have no imports here, so we're not using list. Um, our yacht scorer should not be using list either. This is all uh, using dice roll. And all our tests pass. So we've fully migrated now um, from a list of integer. So we've we've constrained it, right? Remember I was talking about sort of this, this two-dimensional freedom for for the dice roll was it's a list which means it can contain zero or many um but it can also change uh can also contain zero or many integers so we've at least constrained it so it must have five integer five integers um what we haven't constrained uh and right now there's no compelling need to do that um we haven't constrained it along the lines of a die is one to six uh we can do that uh, at some future point when when we feel it's necessary. Um, still not happy about this stream, so we can look at maybe further encapsulating it and pushing some of the distinctiveness uh, into the dice roll itself. Um, possibly we have a full house score that's separate. Um, but we'll we'll leave this there for now. Uh, but now calculate score is is super easy. Uh, it almost is not worthy of of having its own method, but it is a fair amount of duplication. Plus we get uh, some nice naming naming from it. So uh, completed migration to dice roll class from list of integer. Uh, and I think that's it for today. So we went longer than, than I, I usually do, but I, I kind of wanted to get that refactoring in. Um, so next time what we need to do is we'll continue with uh, the game test and pushing along, okay, how do we start assigning, you know, one thing we'll have to figure out is this one, one, two, three, four is hard coded in game. Uh, in fact, it might even be hard coded in it's hard coded in roll dice. Uh, we'll see as we write more tests for 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 scoring that uh, that we're gonna have to figure out a way to control that last die roll, uh, that last dice roll. 
so that when it, we assign the roll, when we say roll dice, we'll be able to control what gets generated here. And so likely that will be, we're going to pass in a die roller um, into the game. And we've already got one. So uh, we'll actually be able to make, make use of that. Um, so that's it for today. Be strong. Be strong. Oh, 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 oh,